It's been over 11 months since the beginning of the civil war in Sudan and the humanitarian situation has drastically deteriorated. UN officials say that 222,000 children could die of malnutrition in the coming months. The civil war between powerful and brutal generals has already created the world's largest displacement crisis. Around 8 million people are either internally displaced or have been forced to leave the country. To remind our viewers, this war began due to the rivalry between the Sudanese armed forces and the paramilitary rapid support forces. These two forces had earlier been in cahoots and had staged a coup against a civilian-led government in 2021. We go to Abdul to find out what has been happening in Sudan. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. A very disturbing situation in Sudan has become one of the biggest humanitarian crises in the world right now and that's saying a lot considering the number of conflicts taking place. But first of all, could you tell us a bit about what is the latest information on this situation? We've had a couple of reports coming from the UN now. Well, uh, Prashant, if you see the numbers which are coming from the UN and from uh, the other agencies, uh, it is quite, uh, you can say, uh, stark in the in the same we can see similar situation as we saw a uh, few years back in yemen and in other parts of the world uh even is claiming that if the situation is not curved right now sudan will soon become the world's uh, greatest humanitarian tragedy uh, given the fact that almost half of the population around 25 million are uh, uh, basically on the level of uh, starvation uh, facing phase four of what we call the uh, 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 level of uh, basically lack of food or a famine there in that uh, country. And there are also reports coming that around 18 million people, uh, which is around 40% of the entire population, which is already acutely food uh, insecure, which would mean phase five of the IPC. Uh, we have uh, discussed that. So, uh, and it also includes a large number of children, around 4 million children, around 3.84 million children, which are basically starved. And uh, that would mean that future generations of Sudan would be, uh, 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 will have uh, stunted growth, and that will lead to uh, a kind of a generation which will not be able to, uh, uh, in, in any way, much productive and much, uh, 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 so that is the condition overall. Uh, there are also reports coming that uh, as per the UN claim uh, in the Security Council, there was a presentation which claimed that around 200,000 plus children will die sooner if uh, soon in Sudan if the situation continues. Uh, and it also in says that almost 90% of the population will fall into uh, the phase five uh, of the IPC. So if you see the numbers, all of these numbers together, uh, it it, it is clearly saying uh, that the overall humanitarian situation in Sudan is becoming bad every day, and 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 uh, 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 this the war which is basically reaching uh, 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 its uh, one year uh, uh, anniversary, uh, which basically lead to further complications. Primarily because uh, now there are uh, reports coming that. Uh, the, the the areas which were considered to be the food ba uh, basket of Sudan, Al Jazeera or Jazeera region, uh, which used to produce uh, the most of the food grain for the country, is basically under war, and a large number of farmers have been either killed or displaced because uh, the war is right now going on there. And uh, since this is uh, summer is coming. Uh, and if this situation continues, of course, uh, there is no grain production in Sudan. And, and of course, there is no uh, much import coming out from outside. So that you can imagine that how the situation is going to unfold in the coming days. Right, Abdul, uh, now to come to the fighting, could you maybe take us through what has been, you know, what is the kind of fighting that is taking place in the region as a whole? We know that fighting began between the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces. A lot of changes have taken place since uh, the uh, last year, but where is, what is the situation on the ground now? Well, uh, Prashant, the situation on the ground is quite stark at on that front as well. Um, uh, initially, when the uh, uh, RSF and the Sudanese armed forces started fighting. This was a fight between the two uh, uh, Arswai uh, alliance partners. But 
gradually there are also reports coming that the the uh, resistant committees which are the people's committee who are, who have been involved in a kind of rescue and relief operation for the people they are also been targeted increasingly by both these parties because they think that uh, uh, the people's committees or the resistance committees may create some kind of threat to to their uh, claims over power so it is you can say it is a kind of a three uh, uh, prong uh, fight which is happening and there is a claim made by the sudanese army that uh, the rsf is basically getting a uh, huge support external support from countries such as uh, uae and because of that uh, support rsf has been able to get hold of control of uh, not only a large part of capital khartoum but also of course darfur was there a stronghold but there are also uh, fights uh, happening in december they uh, got control over most part of Al- uh, al jazeera or jazeera as i said before the main food producing re- food producing region so most of the uh, uh, sudan is now under uh, war and it seems that rsf uh, is still quite strong and in fact gaining ground in different parts of the country that would mean that uh, the sudanese armies is in no position uh, to kind of uh, at this moment at least to basically counter and kind of claim any kind of consolidation of territories under it and that would mean that the the war will prolong further because rsf when it is in advantageous position uh, uh, it seems that it is not in mood to kind of uh, have any kind of political uh, solution uh, to the problems uh, and and that would mean that more and more sudanese will uh, continue to suffer uh, if this continues right uh, thank you abdul for the update a very disturbing situation france is fined google 250 million euros in a case related to paying companies for reproducing their content online now the ever present question of ai has also come up in this case too as google is accused of training its product gemini on content published by news organizations without informing them This is the latest instance of a long battle between news organizations and publishers and digital giants like Google over the rights and profits to content and it is an issue that will escalate in the future as AI's role in our lives increases. We go to Bapa for details. Bapa thank you so much for joining us. Could you maybe first take us through what this verdict is? We have seen a lot of discussion on the question of who is who owns this content or you know how much Uh, do digital companies have to pay for instance so what is the what are the reasons for this 250 uh, million euro fine right so the um, this is a long standing battle between really google and uh, various authorities in the eu uh, this this particular one is with uh, france's competition um, uh, authority and uh, and there have been previous um, encounters between these two entities um i think in uh, in 2021 the competition authority had fined google um um around 500 uh, 5 close to 600 i think 592 million euros at, at that time uh, saying that uh, google was infringing on uh, uh, copyright uh, copyrighted material from the content publishers and not uh not uh, giving them adequate compensation for that so google as you know kind of scrapes a web and then uh uh uses content which um publishers uh put on the web and then kind of shows them in in various platforms which google has right with like the most obvious one and which most people use is google search but it's not just search it's also uh google news um uh, there is a service called discover which is which on your mobile phones uh these are stories which come up and um, um so at that time google had initially appealed but then uh, later uh, they had uh, reached a settlement and and as a result of the settlement what they had said was that they would sign these uh, fair agreements with uh, content publishers so that they get um, compensated adequately for their content while uh, uh, i mean the, the key issue is google using uh the headlines and the tech and the kind of news snippets and then putting them as is on their google news and and uh, discover and the top stories in in the search results right so this is uh, so at that time google had done that and google had committed to uh enter into this fair uh, uh agreements with various content publishers um now this is yet another fine um uh on on pretty much on the same issue the the uh, 
um, EU, uh, the, the France's uh, um, competition authority saying that uh, Google is uh, again not adequately um, compensating these uh, publishers, right, or, or not entering into fair agreements with them. And this one is for uh, uh, 250 million euros. Uh, what is interesting this time around is that uh, they have added on uh, a, a new angle to this, and they have said that uh, Google has used uh, the uh, the content from uh, news publishers for training their AI. Uh, uh, so, so Google has um, uh, this AI called Bard, which they now have re renamed into Gemini, and and Gemini is uh, um, like being used in. Uh, it's been uh, Google is pushing it in multiple services, including Gmail, right? And and so uh, the what the comp competition uh, commission of France is saying is that Google has used uh, copyrighted material from from news publishers to train its AI without notifying the the content publishers, and and that. Um, is a violation uh, of copyrighted material and copyright laws of you. Uh, this is in a very preliminary, this the second part of training the AI. This is, I think, in a very preliminary state. Um, and, and the comp uh, competition uh, authority has said that, that it's in a pre preliminary stage of investigation. But, uh, but I think this is the really big area of the future because we have seen um, multiple such uh, uh, Lawsuits uh, uh, from from various con and, and news publishers are taking on uh, not just Google's AI but um, uh, the Chat GPT from OpenAI. They they have been uh, they there have been cases we have heard about uh, regarding this. Right, Bapa. Actually, that was my next question because the New York Times Chat GPT case was also very prominent in the news. It seems that we are heading towards that kind of territory which which we have not gone into before. And earlier it was just about you know uh, the content itself now it's also these this is not just showing the content but actually maybe rephrasing the content so the kind of questions that come out are much more larger in uh, dimension they're much more larger in scope so how where how do you kind of see this fault line developing in the future yeah so i think this is th this this a training the ai part this is a um, this is a very interesting uh, battle uh, which which will be fought over in, in the next few years, right? Because uh, with the popularity of Chat GPT and now um, similar um, uh, chatbots being offered uh, by various uh, uh, of these offerings, right? Uh, 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 Bing has uh, um, is uh, is paired co the copilot, uh, co co right? Uh, and now Google uh, is uh, being paired with Gemini, so so we are going to see more of these uh, offerings, and and like these big tech companies are betting very uh, big as as uh, on on these offerings, right? Um, so um, see that the the kind of the uh, positioning from the big tech companies is that these are uh, intelligent kind of uh, they they are approaching human intelligence, and and they can. Um, uh, communicate with you or, or converse with you as uh, humans do um, and 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 for that they need to be trained and uh, and uh, and they have been trained on uh, various content that is available on the web um, that i think is not the full story right i mean um, frankly these these uh, these chatbots that we have seen they are really nowhere close to uh, human intelligence. Uh, what they instead do is they ingest pretty much all the text that is freely available on the internet, which includes text from uh, the major news publishers, right? I mean, that's like a bulk of the, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say bulk, but but a huge amount of text is, uh, content is generated by news publishers all over the world. And that content uh, is ingested by these chatbots. And what the chatbots effectively do is that they re, re they, they kind of repeat that content, uh, but they, they change it. the yeah. they they rephrase it right. Uh, they, they change the sentence structure, but the content is effectively repeated. Um, and um, so, um, I, I mean, so so that's I think it's fair ground for the content publishers to say that uh, that their content is now going to be uh, uh, produced by other by, by these chatbots. And they, they should uh, really get um, a, a part of that compensation.
And that's all we have in today's Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. Meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.